it's worth bringing you on just to talk about it. I mean, how controversial is this at the Senior Bowl? What is all the fuss about hand size for Kenny Pickett? I'm not sure what to do with my hands. If the NFL draft this year wasn't already extremely underwhelming at the quarterback position, well, do I have some great news for those quarterback needy teams that might be targeting a QB in the NFL draft this year? Yeah, I'm looking at you, Pittsburgh Steelers fans. Yo, what up, New Orleans Saints fans? Before we get to this very unusual report we're giving away a subscriber that turns on our notifications on this channel five hundred dollars we're doing the same exact giveaway on our instagram account where we give five hundred dollars away to an instagram follower and now that we get all that out of the way break. If you just finished working out and are about to take a shower, you don't wanna trust just any shampoo and body wash to take care of your nasty smell after your workout. The wrong body wash could potentially still leave you smelling funky. And if you have a hot date after, that is not a good look, bro. That's why Manscaped just dropped their ultra premium collection, which aims to solve all these problems for you. You start out with Manscaped's two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, which is infused with coconut water, green tea, aloe vera, and turmeric. This non-greasy daily conditioning formula is naturally hydrating and rich in antioxidants to protect your hair. Once your hair is rinsed, you wanna move on to Manscaped's body wash. It's infused with their cologne and features a luxurious lather, which is good for any skin type. It also has sea salt to exfoliate and aloe vera in order to really moisturize your skin. Now, once you're done with that, you wanna use the ultra premium body spray to make sure you're smelling good after your shower. And unlike other body sprays that dry the living crap out of your skin, Manscaped's body spray is infused with red algae, which soothes and moisturizes your skin. After that, try their aluminum-free, stain-free deodorant, which dries clear, and finish off with Manscaped's moisturizing lip balm, which has menthol and eucalyptus, which leaves your lips feeling like nice and tingly and cool. And right now, when you use my promo code FLIGHT, you'll get 20% off of your purchase. That's promo code FLIGHT for 20% off of your purchase on manscaped.com. And thank you, Manscaped, for the sponsor. Mic check 1212. What's going on, everybody? Guys, I have gone out on a limb to compare this year's NFL draft to the 2013 NFL draft. And there's a lot of similarities. The prospects that are currently garnering the most attention and hype currently are two offensive linemen. One being Evan Neal, which to his credit, he looks very ripped for a guy that's supposed to be 300. 137 pounds and is a potential number one overall pick. And the other is Ikem Ikwanu out of NC State. Currently in the NFL draft this year, it's very unlikely that we're going to see a quarterback taken in the top 10. When you compare that to last year, where we literally had three QBs go with the first three picks in the NFL draft, one of the most ridiculously hyped prospects that we've seen in recent memory in Trevor Lawrence, and ultimately seeing five quarterbacks go in the first round. To give you an idea of how bad things are, are currently for this year's NFL draft, there's been significantly more chatter surrounding Mitchell Trubisky, you know, the former quarterback bust that was drafted by the Chicago Bears that went on to the Buffalo Bills that feels significantly better about himself after spending one year under Brian Dable and watching Josh Allen perform than there is about Kenny Pickett or Malik Willis or Sam Howell or anyone that is entering this year's NFL draft. Well, despite that, there's still going to be some teams that are going to take a shot at a QB. And for all you know these pre-draft analyses could be incorrect but in this instance there's this one report surrounding Kenny Pickett who is by far supposed to be the number one quarterback off the board this year although it might be in the late first round or maybe like past the top 15 that went absolutely viral on social media today and that's the fact that this man Kenny Pickett has obscenely small hands for a quarterback I mean the official report states that Kenny Pickett according to Adam Schefter and Benjamin Albright and just probably most of NFL media at this point because this was over reported over and over and over again is that Kenny Pickett has eight and a half inch hands which would make for the smallest hands for a quarterback in the entire NFL. Now you might be thinking
thinking, Mike, who cares? It's not like he's supposed to be a hand model. Well, when you consider the fact that Kenny Pickett has fumbled 26 times when he was playing for Pittsburgh in college, that could be slightly concerning. The last time there was a good quarterback in the NFL that had eight and a half inch hands, it was Michael Vick. And I know Kenny Pickett already is known to be a pretty decent scrambling QB or hell, even an above average scrambling QB. He is not on the same tier as Michael Vick. Now, to give you some context about this situation, Kenny Pickett fumbled 26 times in college. In addition to that, if you want to get a comparison for Kenny Pickett compared to any other QB in the NFL or in NFL history, this is an excellent analysis from Warren Sharp, saying that out of 663 QBs with measured hand sizes since 1987, only nine had smaller than eight and a half inch hands. There is no QB in the NFL with eight and a half inch hands. There has been no QB to enter the NFL in at least five years with eight and a half inch hands. And the last successful QB with eight and a half inch hands was Michael Vick. I thought this was actually pretty funny because Joe Burrow has this famous tweet about how he was considering retirement after he was informed that the football will be slipping out of his tiny hands. Keep him in your thoughts. To give you an idea, Joe Burrow has nine inch hands. So he half an inch bigger. And whenever they measure hand size, it's usually from this thumb all the way to the pinky and they go across kind of like how you would measure a flat screen TV. Now, the significance of this is this is a man that had known fumbling issues in Pittsburgh. As a matter of fact, throughout his entire career at Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Kenny Pickett fumbled 38 times. Now, the argument for his hand size being such a concern is because if you are playing in bad weather, it could be a slight concern. And when you also consider the fact that in the NFL, the football is slightly larger than it is in college, then that could be a huge difference for a quarterback that you want to be a franchise cornerstone for yourself and a quarterback that you're spending a first round pick on. Now, there is a counter argument to this narrative because at the same time, Kyler Murray and Joe Burrow, two former number one overall picks, had very tiny hands. Kyler Murray had nine and a half inch hands. Joe Burrow had nine inch hands. But in this instance, if you want to see whether there's a correlation between fumble rate and hand size, well, here is a remarkable argument that could potentially be used against the narrative that Kenny Pickett is going to be significantly more turnover prone as a result of his hand size. If you take a look at this chart over here, you'll see to your left is varying hand sizes to the right is varying fumble rates. And you can tell that Derek Carr and Jared Goff do have 15% fumble rates, but Sam Darnold, Teddy Bridgewater, and Jimmy Garoppolo and Patrick Mahomes all have varying fumble rates as a result of their hand size. Then you go to Jameis Winston, and you can just tell that maybe hand size doesn't have that much to do with it. I think it's very difficult to draw this correlation 100% because there are other factors at play here. There could be the fact that you are playing behind a terrible offensive line. You could be playing in a climate that has more rain and more snow throughout the year. So I think it's very difficult to contextualize and create a correlation between hand size and fumble rate. But regardless, it is something to keep an eye on because at the same time, Kenny Pickett already has a lot going against him. And this could eventually deter a Pittsburgh or a New Orleans or hell, even a Denver from trying to take a chance on him. So let me know in the comment section down below if you think this narrative has been blown out of proportion or if you think there's something to it. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.